Hey everyone, today's video I'm continuing the series on the most common triggers for Meniere's disease attacks. And today I'm going to be talking about how weather and temperature changes can flare up and trigger Meniere's attacks. So if you have Meniere's disease, you're still suffering with the vertigo and the nausea and the imbalance and the tinnitus and weather really affects your uh, Meniere's disease, I think you're going to find today's video very helpful. So if we start with the basics, Meniere's again is endolymphatic high drops. It's essentially excess fluid in the inner ear. It's, in my opinion, an inflammatory problem almost 100% of the time. Uh, in the last 20 years, me seeing Meniere's patients, almost every one of them has responded very well to some sort of immune system focused uh, treatment. Now, it's not always the same as we'll talk about. Everyone's got their own phenotype. Most cases have an inflammatory phenotype. Phenotype just means what something looks like. Uh, some cases have an immune deficiency. Uh, some cases have an autoimmune attack on the inner ear itself, but that's not that common. Uh, more often, it's an uh, autoimmune problem outside the ear, and it's the inflammatory fallout from that that is manifesting uh, in the Meniere's ear. And I've seen bilateral and unilateral. I've seen people taking beta histine. People have had surgery. People have had tympanic steroid injections. And sometimes what you find in the history is that weather changes and temperature changes affect their Meniere's, can trigger attacks. Now, why would that be? Well, this isn't a big meteorology lesson, but it's not that complicated. Uh, barometric pressure typically falls when you have, uh, for example, a storm system move in. Now, there can be you know, high pressure systems, but let's just talk about low pressure systems. If uh, like storm clouds are coming in and there's a front coming in, the barometric pressure ahead of that tends to drop. Now check out what happens. We literally swell a little bit from the inside out when the pressure outside of us drops. It's almost like, you know, you know blowing up a balloon. And that little bit of pressure change, that little bit of swelling can really tip a Meniere's ear over the edge. Now, if weather is doing that to you, your Meniere's is very, very fragile. I mean, a lot of people think of Meniere's uh, patients having fragile ears anyway, and that's, that's fairly accurate. And if weather changes yours, uh, you have a very, very, very unstable uh, Meniere's. I'm a little more worried about the, uh, the progress and the prognosis for yours. Doesn't mean nothing can happen, uh, nothing, that doesn't mean you can't help it, uh, but I am a little more worried about it because if that little bit of pressure change is enough to cause your symptoms to flare up, uh, you probably have a real baseline of instability. Now, that instability could be caused by a lot of things. It could be caused by blood sugar problems, could be caused because you're uh, uh, taking in too much sodium or caffeine. There, there's a whole lot of things that we need to look at. And that brings me to kind of like the final point, which is if weather and temperature changes trigger your Meniere's disease, you need to be working with someone that can start to peel back the onion <laughs> and be a detective and find out why is your ear so unstable uh, just at baseline, right? Is it you have an autoimmune problem or you have an inflammatory problem because I don't know what you've been told, but if you've been told that your diet has nothing to do with Meniere's or it's only sodium or whatever, that's not true. Uh, there are things you can do, but you've got to search for them. So like in my practice, I've mentioned this a bunch of times, uh, I like to do what's called uh, comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotyping, which really lets us get your immune system fingerprint for like what your immune system is doing in your Meniere's disease. I'm trying to make that point about seeing yours because even though you might have Meniere's disease and you've got symptoms like other Meniere's patients, you know, your triggers uh, are different from other people's triggers. Like you might be have weather triggers. Other people might have stress triggers, which we'll talk about in another video. And the reason that might be is because of what your immune system is doing. So like this lymphocyte immunophenotyping test really lets us look and say, hey, what is your T cells and B cells and T helper one and T helper two? Like, what are they doing? Because your symptoms can't really tell me what it's going to look like. And knowing what it looks like, like what's high and what's low, what's normal, you got to do the test to find that out. And once you know that, you can be very specific and very targeted in the treatment. Uh, the other uh, uh, testing I like to do beyond just kind of the uh, looking at blood sugar and you know other things like that is I like to do uh, multiple tissue antibody testing because, as I mentioned earlier, uh, some people that come in have autoimmune conditions they didn't know they have. And it's the inflammatory fallout from those that are really driving uh, the fire and the instability uh, in their Meniere's disease. Uh, multiple tissue antibody testing also, by the way, we'll talk about this a little more in another video, 
is really helpful for refining what foods someone should be avoiding. Now, I don't even do IgG food sensitivity testing anymore because it's basically a waste of time. So that's just, that's just one aspect of what you have to look at when you're looking at someone with Meniere's disease. Yes, the triggers may be uh, weather and temperature changes and barometric pressure changes like I talked about earlier, but those really shouldn't be triggering you if your Meniere's disease is stable, right? So you gotta be working with someone that can take the time to, to be very, uh, do good detective work and really dig and find out for your case of Meniere's what is fueling the fire, okay? So I got other episodes on more triggers, so I'll see you then.